Good morning from Miami. Lisa Martin here live with theCUBE on the floor of IFS Unleashed. We are thrilled to be back with them after not seeing them for three years, of course, of obvious problems. But I'm very happy to be welcoming back one of our CUBE alumni and the CEO of IFS, Darren Roos. Darren, it's great to have you back on theCUBE. Thank you, Lisa, it's great to be here. Yeah, I was telling you before we started, it must have felt amazing, exhilarating this morning, walking out on stage, seeing that sea of people, of live bodies, and actually getting to engage with your customers and your ecosystem 100%. in person again. Yeah, it's great. You know, I think we've we've all dealt with all of the, the challenges that COVID have brought and uh, I think just going back to something that feels very normal and uh, you know, getting to interact with people again at the scale is is really unique and, and a, a great feeling to be back, back in the in the throes of normality. Exactly, in the throes of normality. Well, so much has changed since the Cube last caught up with you. Yeah. I think it was 2019 in Boston. Right. Talk to me about some of the specific things that, that you've learned during the pandemic that IFS has done, because there's a lot of momentum which we're yeah. going to uncover on the show today. Yeah, look, I think when we were, when we met last in 2019, uh, the focus then was really on, on building out our field service management offering. Uh, we'd always been a, a contender in the ERP space and, and with some asset management capability, but the focus was really on establishing ourselves as a leader in the field service management space. Um, and today we are the undisputed leader in field service management, uh, both from an analyst and customer recognition perspective. Um, and what we've also done is we've really focused on building out that asset management capability and um, you know, today again, we're the number one player in asset management. And when you think about how you bring those two things together and uh, the way that asset and service centric entities uh, have to orchestrate their organizations to create uh, what we call amazing moments of service for their customers, um, then you need a technology platform that can provide all of that. And we do that really best of breed capability across field service management, asset management and components of ERP, but on a single platform. So customers don't have to deal with the integration complexity that they would with, uh, you know, in a, in a more heterogeneous environment. So, Which is yeah. critical for getting time to market, product to Absolutely. market, services, new revenue streams, et cetera. Absolutely. Y you, but you're also the top three ERP vendor. One yeah, of the we're, top we're, three. we're one of the top you're three ERP vendors. You're growing north Absolutely. of 20%, yep. way more than the big guys. Yep. How are you doing it and, and where do you win? Yeah. You know, I think the, the, for, for so long customers have had to choose, as I said, between this best of breed and best of suite um, and making compromises either on functionality or on integration. Um, and I think that you know we're very focused from an industry perspective. Um, as I said just now, we only uh, focus on, on capabilities in, in service and asset-centric industries, think utilities, aerospace and defense, et cetera. Um, and in that space, you know, we have a very compelling proposition. As you said, we can help customers uh, go live faster, uh, we can de-risk those implementations because we have more depth of functionality that's suited specifically to their needs, um, and that makes it compelling, and, and that means that in a, in a world where we're competing against vendors who are very much horizontally focused, um, and uh, that best of suite uh, offering that they have means that the functionality is compromised, or in a best of suite, uh, best of breed world, that the integration is compromised, that's why we're winning and that's why we're outgrowing the competition. And uh, you know, I think we, we just stay focused, we stay in our niche, we stay focused on, on our customers and creating value and, and you know, that's our reason for being. So north of 10,000 customers so far. Has IFS always been vertically focused or is that something that's come on in the last few years, maybe since your yeah, tenure? In the last five years, we've really um, honed in on those asset and service centric verticals. And it's important because when you think about what we do from a development perspective, um, you know, as we build the technology and we think about those emerging use cases around you know, asset investment planning or uh, asset performance management or asset monitoring or all of the things that our customers are thinking about, IOT, um, AI, augmented reality, uh, all of which we're showcasing at the conference, um, you know, you want to do that with a very specific use case in mind because I've talked a little bit about field service management and asset management, but none of our customers consume technology in that way. You know, if they're, uh, um, if, if, if they're in um, oil and gas, then they're thinking about shutdown and turnaround and they're thinking about plant maintenance. They're thinking about specific use cases that are industry focused um, and that's how we build the technology. So, you know, I think that's, that's the differentiator for us and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of customers here and, you know, you, you'll see all of the, 
you know, the solar arrays and the wind farms and all the different things where we're demoing the capability that we have that is very industry focused. The industry focus is so, like you said, very differentiating, but also it's not just we're going where customers are, it's we're listening and we're actually speaking the language that our customers speak. That's yeah. differentiating from the many, many hundreds of, of tech leaders that I talk yeah. to, just so you know. 100%, well look, I think the thing is is that what we recognize is that for us to be able to um, really create value for them in the specific vertical that they're in, it can't be that we stick a marketing label on it. Um, and it, the, the, that industry flavor has to be ubiquitous from you know, when we meet them and we're able to understand the problems that they're facing uh, through to the way that we build the technology to address the problems, um, all the way through to the partners that we're working with who are then going to deliver that solution. They need to understand the industry. Um, and I think that you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, not a particularly level playing field because so many of our competition don't operate that way. They have a horizontal application they have horizontal partners, um, and, and, and then a lot of the rest is, is marketing blurb. Um, but you know, I think the customers that we have here today are, are, are great global international brands. Um, you know, we told some of the stories from the stage this morning with, uh, with companies like Southwest and, and the MRO solution that we delivered for them, and we're immensely proud of that. And you know, our, our focus is on just telling more of those stories and creating more of those stories and being able to point towards tangible value that our technology's created in record time. You know, that's the focus. Right, this, it's all about the business outcomes. We've got, sitting across from our set here is the Aston Martin F1 car. Darren and I were talking before, both big F1 fans. I love hearing the smart factory from, from an F1 team's perspective because, yes. or hearing about aerospace and defense customers because you get to understand the commonalities of these businesses Absolutely. and how similar they are yep. to other industries. They have some of the same huge challenges, 100%. but getting a race car built between now and the February of 23 for the next yes. race season, the amount of manufacturing that has to go on, yeah. smart manufacturing, yeah. and knowing that IFS is really underpinning that is, yeah. is fantastic. Well, it's, it's more complex than that even because they're not building a new team by, a new car by February. You know, they're rebuilding the car every week. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, it's that kind of uh, attention to detail and the speed and sense of urgency that, that we, is a great opportunity for us to showcase the technology and that's why we love the relationship with Aston Martin Racing. Um, but you know, being able to then leverage the learnings from that environment which is super high paced and the cycle times are so much quicker into you know, industries which maybe don't move as fast but are you know, perhaps more mission critical, you know, like an airline um, or uh, you know, some, something equivalent to that. Well, if we think about the, the industries that, that you're focused on, so many of them were the hardest hit during yes. the last couple of years, where they're really arterial industries, and IFS has really been focused on helping these folks transform digitally. Talk to me about IFS as a, as really an, a catalyst of those companies' digital yeah. transformations? You know, we, we interestingly, we, we didn't see a ton of, uh, of impact during COVID to, to our business, but that's because, as you say, they, they were hit, but uh, hit, hit in a, in a, almost in a, in a positive way because it was, they, they were the ones that kept things going. You know, um, think about um, our customers like telcos or utilities uh, or, uh, you know, unfortunately, our, our aerospace and defense customers. Air, uh, commercial aviation aside, uh, but we have a, a bunch of, of defense organizations that are customers. Um, and you know, they, they've had to keep going. And what we've really focused on and, and, and it continues to be our focus is how do we help those businesses to be more efficient? How, and, and this is increasingly, especially what's with, with what's happening in the world today, um, is increasingly important to them. How do they drive operational efficiency? Um, and I talked a lot about the power of IFS's capability on a single platform and how do we bring um, that the, the, the orchestration of the different parts of their business, whether that's their, their customers, their assets, and their people, how do you orchestrate those things in order to create or operational efficiency um, and in IFS language, create those moments of service? Um, and that's what we do. And because we're focused on creating those moments of service and we're helping those customers uh, to be more efficient, you're helping them to drive loyalty and, uh, and, and, and um, you know, repeat business and increased value in their customers, you know, that's, we, we just became and become more important to them. Um, you know, it's not a system that they can turn off and go, you know, we'll do without this for a while. You know, we're, we're really underpinning that value creation for them. You're integral, you're mission critical, yes, really. absolutely. Ta let's double click on the moments of service. I love that from a tagline perspective. It's yes. also the title of your new book. Yes. Congratulations on the Thank book, you. by the way. Define that for the audience. I think they can get a sense of that, but yes. what is, 
and, and it's really IFS enabling its customers exactly. to deliver moments of 100%. service. Talk yeah, to me it's about funny that. as we as we were discussing it, it tends to get used as the moments of service that we provide for our customers, but that's really not what it's about. Um, Every industry, um, every business, uh, when you talk to the CEOs of those businesses, they're thinking about how do they impact their customers? What are the what are the things that they need to do? And every business, when you talk about this concept of a moment of service, every business has multiple moments of service. And everything that we do is about helping those customers, irrespective of whether they are a utility and the service they're providing is a, is a broadband service um, or, a, or a, you know, a, sorry, a, a telco uh, providing a broadband service or a utility providing electricity, and that customer flicks the switch and the power is there or they you know they dial that phone and the and, and the phone call is there that's one of the moments of service that they provide it could be the the you know the engineer going in and activating that service and being able to let the customer know that they're arriving at a certain time and then that broadband being activated so that the customer can actually you know plan around their day um, but those moments of service are what we enable um, and it does it takes a tremendous amount for an organization to come together we've all as a consumer had an experience where you know we've had an expectation and we've been disappointed and 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 that moment of service wasn't provided and almost in every single case it comes down to uh, a fragmented selection of systems that weren't integrated that weren't interoperating you could, you know the wrong technician shows up he doesn't have the right equipment he didn't know that your house you know didn't have a a, a certain capability or or, or or piece of equipment in it um, and that's where it starts to fall down and that's the customer disappointment and that leaves a sour taste in their mouths so everything that we've done whether it's our uh, customer satisfaction monitoring tool, Customable, um, or whether it's the asset management capability, the field service management, managing those techs so that you get the right technician with the right part when they said they were going to be there. All of those things um, are really focused on those moments of service. And you know, as you said, what, what, what resonates with people is that everybody as a consumer you know, interacts with companies where they've been disappointed by a poor moment of service and they've had great moments of service. So it does resonate with everyone. It does, and I actually think moments of service probably in a hopefully post-pandemic world are probably even more important yeah. because I think one of the things, and you talked about this, we've all had these disappointing experiences in the last couple of years that were magnified to some factor of X. Yes. And I think patience has been in short supply. It's yes. probably not going to rubber band no. back. So no. being able to through your technology enable customers to deliver those moments of service that are critical to yeah. reducing churn, increasing revenue, turning revenue into recurring is really a differentiator for your customers. It's yeah. an advantage for them. Well, I think that um, you know, the consumers in general are becoming more demanding. Yeah. That's a, a trend that isn't going to change. COVID certainly accelerated that. That's, that's one element that so we think about kind of big macro trends that are impacting you know, businesses today. Um, the other thing is, is that th this big move towards, towards servitization, and we think about companies like um, uh, Rolls-Royce, who are a customer of ours, who you know, they used to manufacture and sell engines that went on airplanes and, 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 and other engines. Um, and today they don't, they, they rent those by the hour. And the, at, the di at the point that you flip that dynamic from being, you know, making a product and selling it to you know, providing it as a service, the, the world changes completely because all of a sudden you have to think about you know, how, how well are we, are, are we making these assets? Um, how are we going to monitor those assets? How are we going to continue to service those assets? Um, and obviously longevity and quality become so much more important and your customer experience becomes so much more important because if they're not putting a big capital outlay and they're just renting it from you, if you don't provide uh, you know, quality of service, then they'll simply go somewhere else. Um, and, and our technology underpins those motions. Um, so you've got these big trends of customer you know, expectation going up and of course the servitization trend. Right, and we've actually got Rolls-Royce, Nick Ward from Rolls-Royce coming on the program Fantastic. later today. So we'll talk Good. about the big pivot they've made and how IFS has really been yes. transformative in that. Talk a little bit about, in our last few minutes, about supply chain. Obviously we know it's been quite, quite a mess the last couple yes. of years. I saw some research over the summer from IFS that said 66% of organizations are keeping more stock on hand. Yep. More organizations are increasing supplier numbers. How is IFS helping in that sense? Yeah, so I think it's all about visibility, and I think if we can give customers visibility into their supply chains and their stock levels, their inventory, um, and of course, you know what's required from a customer perspective. And again, it's this orchestration of different pieces, which in a heterogeneous, non-best uh, of breed and sweet world means that customers maybe have to try and figure out how they're going to manage all those things across the different systems. In IFS, it's all in one system. Uh, we give them visibility and control um, that they wouldn't ordinarily have. 
and I think that um, you know that, that that's a, a huge point uh, today when you know everybody's under pressure um, you know how, how much money you've got tied up in inventory um, you know what what your 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 um, your, your supply chain uh, uh, cash levels look like is, is a huge challenge for businesses with uh, increasing debt level uh, costs coming up now yeah. so you know I think that um, being able to manage that more efficiently, having better visibility, being able to plan more effectively so that you're, you know, if you're building up your stock supplies, it's because you need those stock and you know what order's coming. Um, and that's where, you know, having integrated capabilities is so important. Um, and that's what we provide. Visibility and control are absolutely critical. I know that energy is one of your vertical yes. uh, special specialties. Talk to me a little bit about how you're helping customers in Ukraine from an energy perspective. Is ISA, yeah. IFS there helping organizations to navigate those headwinds? Yeah, so uh, we're not in Ukraine. It's not an, a, a market that we operate in. Um, but I think that what is you know ubiquitous now in the world is is is, is energy crisis, given what's happening in Ukraine. Um, and I think that. Um, as an industry, we see the utilities um, industry investing heavily both in, in two areas. One is that continuity of service and, and being able to make sure that, again, it has predictability around what the requirements are and how they provide uh, quality of supply and continuous supply. Uh, but the other thing is, of course, is you, you've got this whole move towards sustainable energy. Yes. Um, and that's an area in which we're increasingly involved in. And, and again, like I said, you see a bunch of sustainable energy uh, demos going on around here in being able to help um, companies make the transition um, as well as manage that new infrastructure. Yep, absolutely. And we've got some, you know, we've got we've got a bunch of innovation around that coming in, in the next six months or so. Well, you coming off a fantastic first half, we saw the results over the yeah. summer, ARR up 33%. Yeah. I can only imagine the trajectory in second half is, is strong. continuing yeah. we'll, to we'll go We'll release up. our Q3 results soon, and uh, in fact, all the numbers uh, are improved on, on our half year numbers, so really happy with that development. But it's, you know, it's, it is a testament to our customers, it's an a testament to the way in which they work with us to make sure that we can build differentiated capability. Um, and you know, we, we continue to, to try and work with them and reciprocate that loyalty and uh, you know, that's our story. Synergy, love it. Darren, thank you so much thank for you, coming Lisa. on theCUBE, sharing with us the great momentum that thank IFS you. has been having during your, your tenure, also during the pandemic, the great customer stories that really thank articulate you. your value. We appreciate your time and we look forward to unpacking more on the program today. Thank you, Lisa. My pleasure. For Darren Bruce, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Miami on the show floor of IFS Unleashed. Don't go away, my next guest joins me in just a minute.